Hey everybody, uh, thank you for joining me. My name is Thomas Trooper and I'm a red teamer and cybersecurity consultant at Sealynx. And today I'm going to talk about the uh, exploiting public facing applications vulnerability for MITRE. Okay, uh, so at first, let's begin with understanding what public facing applications are. Public facing applications are programs or systems uh, that are accessible from both the internal and external networks. Usually these applications are websites hosted on a server that runs uh, standard services such as HTTP, HTTPS, SQL, etc. These applications are often connected to a database containing sensitive data such as the application user's details. Also, uh, the application server uh, may be connected to uh, other components in the internal network or in the cloud environment. What an external attacker scenario looks like? Well, at first, the attacker starts by scanning the victim server in order to reveal its exposed services. Then, the attacker will try to look for common exploits regards each service uh, version. When a web server is found, uh, the attacker will enter it and start by learning about the found application and its available functionalities and search for the used plugins and frameworks. Then it will try and attack the site using various attack vectors and payloads such as XSS, SSTI, and SQL injection. The vulnerabilities in the application occur due to insecure application programming or due to the usage of out-to-date services and plugins. An attacker that realizes and exploits these vulnerabilities may corrupt the website, steal the user's sensitive data, or in the worst case, achieve an initial foothold in the hosted web server, which will serve him as the start point of his lateral movement in the server's infrastructure on the cloud environment. When the attacker finds a weak spot in the web application, for example, a search field that receives user input, and inserts it directly to the execute SQL queries, the attacker would be able to inject its own SQL queries and dump the available databases, tables, and their entire stored data of the application. If the, if the attacker was extremely lucky and the web server and the SQL server exist on the same hardware, uh, and the sent queries are being executed as a DBA user, then uh, the attacker would be able to execute operating system commands using the database functionality. For example, in the Microsoft SQL server, uh, there is a function named XPC Ambition. By enabling this feature using the injected queries and of course a DBA user, the attacker would be able to execute the operating system commands using the databases running user account. From this point, the attacker will try uh, to compromise the victim server and start its lateral movement phase in the server's network. As mentioned before, not only web servers are vulnerable to critical vulnerabilities. When exposing other well-known programs to the external network, we are facing ourselves to a variety of risks. For example, uh, the VMware vCenter is a virtualization server management platform. As found in February this year, a malicious actor with a network access to one of the vCenter servers in the versions of 6.5, 6.7, and 7 was able to, uh, as an unauthorized user, uh, to send a specially crafted request, which gave him the opportunity to execute commands with unrestricted privileges on the underlying operating system that hosts the vCenter service. When this uh, exploit uh, was released, attackers uh, scanned the entire network in order to find those public facing vCenter servers and attack them using uh, simple GitHub scripts. AD self service. Uh, AD Self Service is software that lets you uh, manage your Active Directory environment through a web console. During the installation process, if not changed, the default username of the admin panel would be admin with the password of admin. 
if the credentials have not been changed and the company has exposed the admin panel to the external network, uh, the attacker would be able to access the Active Directory environment of the uh, company remotely as the administrative account without being in its network. When uh, the attacker established uh, an initial net, uh, access network uh, to the organization's network, the attacker would be able to compromise the entire organization network with the help of the AD self-service panel. In addition, uh, we have found that it's possible to send every reset password attempt to our email address. By doing so, we were able to obtain uh, the new passwords of the uh, users, which is being sent in a clear text format. After reporting this security issue to Zoho, uh, they say that it's an application feature and not a security issue. Exchange, uh, the proxy logon exploit as found by uh, Oren Tsai, a great uh, security researcher, allowed a malicious attacker bypassing the Microsoft Exchange mail server's uh, authentication mechanism. As a result, uh, impersonating the uh, admin account. Combining with the CVE 2021-27065 uh, uh, vulnerability, which allows the opportunity of writing an arbitrary file to the server, allowed uh, the remote code execution by a malicious unauthenticated user account with uh, the access to the Microsoft Exchange server on port uh, 443. WannaCry uh, is a worldwide uh, ransomware cyber attack occurred in May 2017. Uh, the attacker targeted a Windows operating system based computers. Uh, the ransomware was propagated using the uh, Eternal Blue exploit developed by the NSA group, which has been stolen and leaked by the Shadow Brokers group. Uh, the Eternal Blue exploit uh, abuses the vulnerability in the SMB version 1 protocol in older versions of Windows operating systems uh, prior uh, Windows 8. The SMB v1 protocol in these versions uh, contain an inter-process communication share, aka IPC. Uh, the protocol by default allows establishing an alt session using an anonymous login. The null session allows the attacker to execute operating system commands on the vulnerable host. So starting with uh, the first section of this POC, uh, we start by scanning the victim server using the NMAP tool, which is basically a network port scanning tool. As we can see, uh, the web ports 80 and 9090 and the 3389 port, which stands for RDP connections, are opened in the victim server. At first, we start by accessing the victim host in port 80 using a simple tool named Firefox. Scrolling down the website and viewing its content uh, makes the attacker realize that it seems like a regular website without any extra functionality. Thus, uh, in order to reveal additional routes of the application, we will be conducting a directory brute force attack using a tool uh, such as GoBuster that tries to access the routes from a, a predefined word list and realizes whether or not they exist in the application. And as we can see, uh, the manager route exists. So let's try and access it. As we can see, um, this is the Tomcat Manager panel uh, login section. We can try and uh, log in using the following credentials. And in case they were not changed, we will be able to access this uh, panel. It's important to mention that mostly this username and password combination would not work. And we will need to look for the Tomcat default credentials. Or if we already know one of the existing username, we can boot force their password. As we can see in this section, we can deploy applications to the server using a WAR file. But instead of a regular application, we will be deploying a web shell application. So 
uh, we will uh, uh, join the uh, Maya uh, directory and uh, view the content of the index.jsp file, which is basically a form that receives a command from a user input to the CMD parameter and executes uh, it using the exec command. The following web shell example is a well-known syntax that should be changed in order to bypass some AV and EDR software. Using the jar binary, we will compress the entire folder content using the CV and F flags and create the myapp.war file. Now, uh, we will browse to the newly created myapp.war file directory and deploy the application to the server. Let's navigate to the myapp route. And as we can see, our application has deployed successfully. We can now enumerate our user privileges and groups using a command line command. From the commands output, we can see that our Tomcat user is part of the local administrators group and, have, and has high privileges. Going further, using the previous Nmap scan results, we will now enter the 1990 uh, web port and see what is hiding behind it. Well, great, a login page to the Jenkins server. We can try to access the script route, which sometimes is open to an unauthenticated user. It seems that we need to look for the Jenkins default credentials and try to use them in the login page. Excellent, we are in the Jenkins script panel. From this point, we can execute operating system commands on the hosted server using the script ex ex execution console. We will create a new user named IT admin using the net command. And then we will add our IT admin account to the administrators group. As we said earlier, we have the 3389 port opened, which stands for remote desktop connections. Thus, we will try to access it using the R desktop binary with the IT admin credentials. And as we can see, we are in the compromised server. Simple as that. All right, so for the mitigations, the first one is application isolating and uh, sandboxing. We would like to restrict the ability of an attacker to access the system resources and data by sandboxing the application and by running it from a virtual machine, for example. WAF implementation. WAF will cause harder work to an attacker and slow his attack process. Also, uh, the unsuccessful attempt would be paged out and the SOC members would be able to notice the attacker behavior. Network segmentation. Uh, web servers that are faced to the external network should always stay behind the DMZ or in another VLAN that is not allowed to connect to the internal network. This operation will sandbox the application server and will limit the attacker attack surface. List privileges. 
we should always use uh, list privileges for the application service account in order to limit the permissions uh, of the exploited process running by the service account. The following will make it more difficult for the attacker to perform its actions on the server. Stay updated. Always check for the available software and plugins updates in order to minimize the application uh, vulnerabilities. Also, try to track the newly released TVs uh, for your daily used applications and understand what is the founded vulnerability. Scan for vulnerabilities. Scan your public facing application regularly in order to find the vulnerabilities and patch them as soon as possible. It's always better choice to hire a professional PT team for this action or use a continuous threat teaming and attack surface management platform such as Synergy that will identify, scan and prioritize risks uh, from your company's public assets and provide you a better insights. Thank you guys for joining me in this webinar. Uh, feel free to ask me any question raising through my LinkedIn profile.